I want to welcome you again to this time of worship. Today I'm beginning a series of sermons called Followership. Followership. In the revised common, common uh, lectionary, which is a three-year cycle of readings that we share with a number of denominations, the beginning of the year always focuses in some way on Jesus calling his disciples. And so discipleship sort of begins uh, our year. Uh, that is January, February time frame in the, in the season of Epiphany. There is this emphasis on discipleship and on what it means to answer the call to be a follower of Jesus. And so followership is, is the title of my series. And uh, to be honest, when I came up with that name, I thought that it was not a real word, but in fact it is. It's not a very old word. Um, the dictionary says that 1913 was the earliest known use of the word followership, but it's the counterpart to leadership. We talk a lot about leadership and how important that is, but followership, uh, and that means who we follow, what we follow is extremely important. And following Jesus, uh, as, as followers of Jesus, what does that mean for us? And what does it mean for us uh, now in this time, in the place where we live, the place where we work? Uh, whatever it is that, <clears throat> that we do, what does it mean uh, to be a follower of Jesus? What does it mean in this time in our nation and in our world to be a follower of Jesus? I've been thinking a lot about that, <clears throat> as you probably have too. Um, we have seen this resurgence over the past few years uh, of something that's been around for a long time, and that is Christian nationalism. This um, uh, dangerous blending of nationalism with Christianity that always tends to twist and uh, warp both patriotism and the Christian faith. And so it's particularly important, I think, for us to be thinking together about what it means to be a follower of uh, Jesus. And today I want us to think about what it means to be a student of Jesus. Following means learning. In fact, the word disciple uh, is a word that means a student or a learner, one who sits at the feet of a rabbi, a teacher. And, and so if we're following Jesus, we're going to be uh, learners. And those earliest disciples did that. You think about those earliest disciples. What did they do? Uh, they followed Jesus, literally followed Jesus. They went from place to place with him for three years. They, they listened to him as he taught. They watched the way that he interacted with people. They, they listened to him talk about the grace of God and they watched him as he ministered to people and as he cared for people and as he welcomed and accepted people. They were learners and following does mean learning. Now you may be wondering as you heard the gospel text from the Gospel of John a moment ago, what does that have to do with, with learning? So let me remind you of that story. It's uh, the call of Jesus' first disciples in the Gospel according to John. Uh, Jesus calls Philip. Philip becomes a follower. Philip goes and finds Nathaniel. Uh, and he says to Nathaniel, I have found the one about whom uh, the uh, Moses in the law and, and the prophets spoke. Uh, it's Jesus, uh, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. And uh, the response of Nathaniel is a little bit snobby, frankly. Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, what good can come out of that podunk little place? And the response of Philip to Nathanael is, come and see. And so he goes with Philip, and, and he meets Jesus. And when Jesus sees him, uh, Jesus uh, says, now there is a, a, a genuine Israelite uh, who, in whom there is no deceit, no guile. And, of course, Nathanael's response to that is, well, how, how do you... How do you know me? And Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree. 
I saw you under the fig tree. Now, we would read right over that and not realize uh, the importance of that particular tree in what Jesus was saying. The rabbis taught that the best place to discuss Torah, to read, to study, is under the fig tree. Uh, Dr. Jim Fleming, who is an archaeologist and a Bible scholar that we have had at, at our church a number of times, um, uh, taught me that that insight. Um, it's, it's the place of, it's the best place to gather and to discuss and to study and, and to learn under the fig tree. He had taught us that uh, before we went on a tour uh, 26 years ago to Israel. Uh, and then when we were on that tour, uh, he reminded us of that and we were at a place called Caesarea Philippi and there was a fig tree there. Uh, and he took us over to the fig tree. Now, I knew about fig trees. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, we would pick figs at uh, Viva Gray's house. She had uh, several fig trees, and, and she would invite us to come pick figs, and, and my mother would make fig preserves. Uh, we had a fig tree in our first parsonage yard right after we married. Uh, and so I knew about fig trees, but I had never seen a fig tree like this. It was gigantic. And Jim gathered us, that group of pilgrims, uh, gathered us under that fig tree, and he reminded us of the importance of the fig tree. That's the place, the best place to, to learn and to study and to discuss Torah, to discuss the scriptures. And then he just fell silent. And he waited for us to experience what it was like. It was a hot day, but under the fig tree, it was cool. And it was the time of the year where the figs were just ripening and it smelled like fig newtons under there. And then he broke the silence and he said, do you see why this is the best place to meditate, to pray, to learn, to discuss the scriptures? And we did see, and we felt, and we smelled uh, that the fig tree is, a, is a, a great place for learning. So Jesus saw Nathaniel under the fig tree, and, and just seeing him there, watching him probably discuss and, and uh, argue and question and, uh, with uh, other people, perhaps with some rabbis, uh, to see him studying scripture under there, uh, he knew this is a person, a genuine person who is searching and, and learning and growing in the faith. And he knew that he would be one of those inner circle of disciples. And so Nathaniel followed him. Following means learning. And how important it is for us as followers of Jesus to uh, have open hearts and minds and to constantly seek to learn. You know, those disciples, as they walked with Jesus, as they traveled with Jesus, as they listened to him, what they learned, what they absorbed, and what they continued to learn and to teach was the grace of God the love of God, this thing that Jesus called the kingdom of God, the realm of God, where ever and whenever God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven and called people to be a part of that. And, and that's, what we, that's what we're called to learn as followers of Jesus and to be lifelong learners in that. That's why we emphasize so much in our church education uh, the grace groups, the Bible study groups, where we metaphorically sit under the fig tree uh, together um, and, and we look forward to the time when we are back physically together uh, to learn and to uh, sharpen one another. And that's a lifelong process. It's a process for the church, too. Not only do we learn together as a community of faith, but as a church, we are to be a learning organization. Uh, that's kind of a 
phrase that's been around for a while and pointing to the importance of nonprofits and businesses and, and churches for that matter to, to always be learning about how to do whatever it is they do in the best way. And we're a learning organization as a church. We had no idea how much and what we would be learning in this past year, uh, how to connect with one another in this new way out of necessity. Uh, we've learned a lot that will continue to serve us post-pandemic as well because following Jesus means being learners. Jesus said, the way that we love God is to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our mind as well. And so as followers of Jesus, as a community of faith, we don't set aside knowledge or set aside facts or set aside science in order to be people of faith. No, we embrace truth in whatever ways that it is to be found. And how important is that in our world today? So when Nathaniel um, sort of in a snobby way said, what good can come from Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. Come and see. That's the invitation. That's really the invitation for disciples. It's, it's come and see. Come and see Jesus. Come and see God at work in the world. Come and see God at work in the lives of people. And so he does. He goes and he sees and when he sees Jesus, and when Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree, he says, truly, you're the son of God and the king of Israel. And Jesus' response is, really? I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it's kind of like, really? You, you're saying that just because I said I saw you under the fig tree? You will see so much more than that. You're really in for a wild ride as a disciple. You will see God at work in ways that you can't imagine. And that is the invitation to discipleship, to be a follower of Jesus. Come and see. Come and see that God is at work in the world. Come and see uh, the ways in which the power of God's grace and love is lived out in those who are followers. Come and see how much God loves you. Come and see. That's the invitation. You may be joining us perhaps for the first time or you've been uh, tuning in to the service and, and um, kind of wondering what, what this is all about. Uh, or as Lance Marshall often says, maybe you're kicking the tires, checking this thing out. And that's the invitation, come and see. Come and see what it's like to, to be a part of a community of faith, uh, striving together. Come and see what God is doing uh, in our community. Come and see what God is doing in our city. Come and see the grace and the love of God that we see most perfectly lived out in Jesus. That's the invitation, friends. Come and see. And enter into this lifelong learning as we follow Jesus. Amen.